John has been talking on this series of the Holy Spirit, and I will be covering the subject, um, the benefits of the Holy Spirit. I'm so excited to share this message with you. It's been in my heart um, for the past week as I was thinking and, and reading, and I'm just so excited to get it out to you. And you know, it's interesting that this week, it has been such a tough uh, week for me um, as a mom and 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 just felt like I was attacked from every angle. My kids got sick, and then for the past three nights, like, we've been just up because my children are sick, and last night we were up the whole time. And I was like, what is this? Why? Everything just fell on my head all at once. And, you know, and, and, and I felt like, you know, sometimes there's an attack because there's something important that I have to share with you, and you get attacked. And so I want to tell you that the message I'm going to share with you today, it is so important. So I want you to get tuned in, cut out all the distractions, because it is to bless you, bless your life. Amen? Would you just close your eyes for a second? Father, I thank you for your power in this place. I thank you for your presence in this place. I pray that you will anoint me to speak, and you will anoint them to hear. I, I thank you that your anointing breaks every yoke. And I thank you that our minds are going to um, see your glory. We're going to see what you're teaching us and showing to us in the powerful name of Jesus. And we thank you for the life that we have in you and the destiny that we have in you. I thank you that your voice will be so clear today. Teach us, guide us, speak to us. In the name of Jesus, amen. amen. All right. So we had a friend. He was also a pastor. Uh, that he used his cell phone just to call. And so every time he would take it out, and he actually had a separate place where he would keep all the contacts. So it's like, oh, I need to call so-and-so. So he would just manually dial the number and go ahead and call. And we were just observing him. We're like, why are you, why are you doing that? Because do you realize the, the, what you have in your hand? The, the powerful, uh, uh, how do you call it, um, the smart device that you have in your hand. That you can actually save the number and you can just speak into your phone and it's going to call that person. You don't have to actually manually dial it. You can do a voice recognition where you say, call mama, and it does it for you. It's going to call. You could actually, within that same device, you can have all of your business work in the same place. It can send out emails, you can text, you can send it to fax, you can send it to print, you can do, you can scan it, you can pretty much do anything. And if you're tired of business, you can go ahead and switch to the social network and take a little break and see what your friends are up to and what they're doing and with who and where and what you're missing out on and why I was not invited. You can see all of that and then you're like, oh man, now here I'm depressed. Why did I even look at that? Um, I should have stayed focused on business. And then um, we can use the same device to search Google or search any questions that we have. And uh, we, we used to have, we had to run to the library to find the book, to find the interest of what we're looking at, to see the answers. Now we just Google everything. And then we get the source right there, and it tells you from where, and you're like, all right, wonderful. We actually even Google our symptoms. We don't even have to go to the doctor anymore. We used to go to the doctor and say, look at this rash, what do you think it is? Now we just go, go and Google it, like, okay, rash looks like this, and you get 100 different versions, you're like, oh my gosh, I'm dying. And they're saying I'm dying, we just had that with my son. He's like, mom, I Googled it, look, I'm dying. I was like, no, you're fine, you have no cancer, it's a rash, it's gonna go away tomorrow, I promise you. It's just, Google does that. Um, not Google, but, uh, you know, uh, I'm not gonna blame Google. It's just, people, it takes you to the worst scenario possible. You're dying, you're like, really, but I'm only 12. Uh, like that early, no, Jesus. Um, so we, we don't even go to the doctor anymore because uh, we, we can Google our symptoms and it can count our calories too as we're walking. It's like, congratulations, you don't have to go to the gym and you're like, yes, my iPhone is my gym too or the watch, is, that's, that's great. I know exactly how much calories I, I've spent and um, it can be your personal secretary, your reminders, um, you don't even have to have a personal assistant. Everything's going to pop up and say, this is where you need to be. This is where you need to go. This is where you need to show up. As a mom of four, I, I, those pop up all the time. And if they don't, I'm like, something is wrong. Because I know I have to be somewhere. There's no such thing where I can sit in the peace and quiet. And if it is peace and quiet, my kids must have messed something up. Because I need to be somewhere. 
And so here we are. Uh, everything is in this device. Yet he'll go ahead and just and just dial the number. And I was actually guilty of that too. I had a phone for for the longest time. I kept putting the code in to open my phone. And someone told me, he says, Vita, do you know that you can actually stare at your phone? It's called facial recognition. It's going to recognize you even on your bad makeup day or no makeup. That was, I was worried. I was like, what if I wake up in the morning and my phone goes, no, you're ugly. I I don't want to open up. Like, (laughs) what if you said it when you have makeup on and then you wake up without makeup? Your phone's like, nope, wrong person. And so they said, no, no, it's going to recognize you, I promise you. And so they set it up for me. But my question was, how? And they showed me how to do it. And I was enlightened. I'm like, oh, wow, look at this. Now I can stare at my phone and remembers all of my passwords because I forget all of them. And so now when I stare at it, um, I, I don't even have to go to the bank anymore. We, we, now everything you can get, everything on your phone, transfer everything on your phone. And, and I open it up, and I look at it, and my bank opens up. My bank account opens up, and I'm like, this is great because I don't even know the password for my bank account, and my phone does. I, I probably did when I set it up, but now I don't because now I don't have to remember it anymore. And, uh, and so in here we are using the cell phone or, or this device that we have that's running our life, but we can use it to the bare minimum where we constantly dialing the number and using it only for that purpose. So here we are. We live our life missing out on the most important gift that was given to Christians, to the believers. It is gift of God, the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit is the most important person on the planet because it enables us to live victorious lifestyle through him. Yet, Unfortunately, we live our life just dialing the number and using it to the bare minimum. And if you ask somebody, hey, how, how, tell me about the Holy Spirit. How, like, what do you, how does it work? Are you, do you have the Holy Spirit? Yes, I do. So what do you do? Well, when I am in emergency, I just dial 911. I dial the number. So in our Christian terms, when I am, In a hard situation, when I've got an emergency, I say, God, help. And they go, oh, okay. I realize this is where we're at. So this morning, I want to address the benefits of the Holy Spirit. I want you to understand what was given to us, what a gift was given to us, and the the benefits of, of the Holy Spirit and how can we use it in our life. Amen. I will be able to cover only few for the lack of time, but there are so many. I said, had such a hard time to choose which one, this one or that one. Oh, my goodness. And so here's a few that I have picked out, and I will start out with the scripture. John 14, 16. When Jesus was about to leave, he's about to ascend, go, go, go to heaven, and he's saying, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate, which means comforter, encourager, counselor, or Greek says paraclete. I want you to understand. I'm going to go through the definitions. I want you to understand what was given to us, who was given to us. Advocate means helper, champion, upholder, supporter. Comforter means the one that gives comfort. You know, I'll give an example as if it's that comforter, that, that, that blanket when you come to bed and you feel so at home. You, pl- you feel so cozy and you p- feel that this is where you belong encourager he's here to inspire to urge to hope counselor advisor guide mentor confident consultant and so what he's saying is i'm leaving but i'm going to give you another advocate who will never leave you he is the holy spirit who leads you into all truth the world cannot receive him because it isn't looking for him and doesn't recognize him, but you know him because he lives with you and will be in you. I want the words highlighted in your heart. Because he lives with you and will be in you. So benefits of the Holy Spirit. Number one, Holy Spirit is my inner best friend, my companion. One of the greatest fears that people have is fear to be alone, fear of being lonely. 
if we have to go to the party to a new place where we don't know anyone, uh, we'll try to get somebody to come with us that we know. Because we just don't like the feeling of being alone. Can you just come with me? I just don't want to be awkward. I don't want to be by myself. And so when we come to the, to the party, if the, place that we, if the person we brought with us, if they end up socializing and, and hanging out with, with other people and meeting uh, other friends, we have a problem. We're like, wait a minute. You were supposed to be with me, and you, and you left me, and I was all alone. We just don't like to be alone. We watched a movie, uh, Bohemian Rhapsody. Most of you have seen it. It's a documentary on Freddie Mercury's life. And there was an interesting um, point that highlighted that we said, he was afraid to be alone with himself. And it's a normal thing. You hear it all the time. People will put up with anything just not to be alone. You say, why did you allow this to happen? I just don't want to be alone. I just don't want to be alone when I'm, when I'm older. I, I, because I just, why did you follow this? Why did you do this? Everyone was doing it. I didn't want to be alone. I wanted to blend in. I wanted to be a part of it. And we do weird things because we're afraid to be alone. And it's a normal, normal fear that we have. And I love it how Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit is here to be with you and to be in you so you will never be alone. That feeling, I remember that feeling when I got saved at the age 11. We were invited to a service. And um, we weren't going to church before that. We were invited to the service, and, and, and the presence of God was so strong, so saturated that I, I couldn't help myself. I didn't understand the theology. I didn't know the Bible before that. I wasn't reading it. I didn't know anything. I could just sense the presence of God. It was literally, I was like, what is this? To me, it was so new. And they said, whoever doesn't, if you have never been saved, if you have not received Jesus Christ, your personal Lord and Savior, come forward. And I, I ran forward. And then I, they prayed for us, and then I got back. And then said, oh, if you haven't received the Holy Spirit, because it's like, it's, it's a gear too. First you repent, you get saved, and then gear two, you receive Holy Spirit, because he's the one who enables you to live this life. And I was like, sign me up, let's do this. And so I ran forward, I got baptized, received uh, baptism in the Holy Spirit. And I, rem I remember leaving the service, and I was, was watching this. There was so much presence of God, so much, just almost, it was as, a, as if it was tangible. You could almost touch it, feel it. I was like, I'm so afraid to lose it. I don't want to lose it. And going home, I was trying to hold on to it so hard. I was like, please, please, please. I just wish I will help come home and it will be with me at home. And when I got home, I was like, wait a minute. You're here. I can feel you. You came home with me. This is wonderful. I was so excited. And we were going to bed that night and our parents turned off the light and they said, it's time for you to go to bed. And I remember I was so afraid that I was going to wake up in the morning and he's gone. I loved the feeling. I wasn't alone. I had this companion. I had this friend. I, I, I didn't, I've never felt this way. I knew the difference before and after. I knew me going into that service and, and me going after that service. I, I felt it. It was that same day. I was like, I don't want to wake up the old me where I know what it felt like before I went into that service. And I remember I stayed under my blanket so my, my parents don't know that I'm not going to bed. And I was praying. And I was like, oh, I love what I'm feeling. Please don't leave me. Little did I know that in the Bible, I, which I didn't read, I did not know, it says, he will never leave you. I did not know that at that time. I was so afraid to, like, please don't leave me. So I wake up in the morning, and the first thing I was like, is he here? Is he here? Do I feel him? I was like, he's here. That is amazing. Like, he's here. And then I had to go to school, and I was afraid. I was like, you know, it's one thing in the service, another thing at home where everything is still somewhat normal. But then you go to school where people cuss and do weird things and it's and I was like oh he what if he's gonna leave what if he's not gonna want to go with me to school and I came to school and I sat through school and I looked around and he was still in me and with me and he never left me and that was just such a revelation to me which now I I, I get it it was written but it was uh, to me it was new and you know what when I have sinned he never left me he was the first person who was there to talk to me and say you actually need to apologize that was wrong even when my mind was telling me it's okay like it's just a small little thing you took it everybody takes pen he'd be like nope that's not yours put it back I'm like it's just a pen like goodness <laughs> everybody does that we all somehow end up with hundreds of pens in our purses and we just don't know how but it's like but you know how because right now you're you took it, put it back, and you're like, oh, my word, here, fine, you know. 
Here's the pan back. Smallest things like that. But to me, the revelation was that he was the first one who was there to convict me, not to condemn me. He was there to convict me, and he would speak to me. I have a better life for you. I have a better future for you. I have a better purpose for you. You know, when I ended up as a girl, if I was invited in the wrong places, when I show up there, I heard his voice loud and clear. This is not for you. There's a better destiny for you. There's a better future for you. There's a greater things for you. What are you doing here? And I was like, I, I know, I know. I just got to find a ride home and find a way to cover it up so my mom doesn't know. <laughs> like, let's go. But that feeling that he was there with me, that was so beautiful. Holy Spirit is my inner best friend. He's my companion, and he's not weird. Okay, I just have to rub it in a little bit. You know, when... when when Jesus was here, here on earth, Satan thought, okay, I, the minute I kill him, it's done and over with. I'm, everything is good. And then Jesus died, and on the third day, he rose again. Hello. And he's going to heaven. He's telling disciples, he's like, you guys, I'm going to heaven, but I'm going to send another helper who's going to finish my work, who's going to complete my work. And guess what? He's going to be in all of you at the same time. No longer do you have to chase me, look for me, find me, because he's going to be with you and in you. And then there's going to be the spirit of God in you at all times. And then he, he, he was gone. And then devil is watching disciples. And those guys have turned the world upside down. Because they were timid and scared and afraid and denied Jesus before uh, he was ascended. When, they were, when, when he was crucified, they were saying, oh, we don't know who he is. No, we, no. Do you think we're part of him? No, 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 no. We, we have nothing to do with him. Look at me again. No, I don't know. They were running away. They were denying. They were scared. And here they are after Holy Spirit was released. They were bold, courageous, preaching the gospel, speaking to thousands, and no they were unstoppable. Nothing could stop them. Nobody knew what to do with them. A the devil is looking at this, and he's saying, oh, my goodness, this, this, this God in them, what do I do with it now? And he thought, you know what? I think I have a plan. How do I make it that it would be for weird people only? For strange people only. How do I get believers to be afraid of this very gift that was given to them? How do I get them to be scared of it? And how do I make it controversial? And I think he came up with a plan. Some of the people have done the weirdest, the strangest things. And they have claimed that it was the Holy Spirit who did it. But you know what? It wasn't the Holy Spirit. Those people were weird to begin with. They would have been weird with or without the Holy Spirit. But, unfortunately, people would blame the Holy Spirit. I've been to the service where people would scream loud and disrupt the services. And if you ask them, why did you do that? They're like, oh, it's the Holy Spirit. Don't you ever question me. It was the Holy Spirit. And I'm like, you know what? Holy Spirit is gentle. He is gentleman. He will never distract the service. God is a God of order. Read the Bible. Hello. If God created order, he's not going to go against his own order. And so here's people that are running wild and doing all these crazy things and saying, oh, well, well, excuse me, don't you point fingers at me. Respect, it was the Holy Spirit. And people are like, okay, that's a little weird. Uh, I've had people come up to me and be like, well, you know what's on my grocery list? And I was like, what is it? The Holy Spirit told me what I need to purchase. And I'm like, okay, that's great. Well, you know, the way I go shopping, it's very not spiritual. I open my fridge, and as a mama of four, I see that I have no milk. And I write it down, and I go buy milk. Okay. And you just feel so not spiritual. There's people that have said things that the Holy Spirit told me to tell you, and it would say something completely not biblical, something that's against the Bible, against what's written, but then a lot of people don't actually read the Bible, so they don't even know. So they get scared, and they say, you know what? This Holy Spirit is a little wild. He's a little... Uh, crazy and I am afraid I just don't understand it so therefore I'm just gonna stay away or if any I'm okay to to have him in a little doses 
tiny little doses where I can control him and manage him because everything else is wild. I'm a little scared. And I get that and I understand that. But the work of the devil was to turn the work of the Holy Spirit and present it as if it was something that you were supposed to feel physically. Do you, do you feel the tingling? Do you feel the shaking? Do you feel, uh, what was it, the, 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 the shaking, the goosies, yeah. Do you feel the goosies? Do you feel it? Oh, it's the Holy Spirit, wonderful. And so all of a sudden, the work of the Holy Spirit was diminished to the goosies and the shaking and all of the physical, where in essence, the work of the Holy Spirit was to complete the work of Jesus. It's not to give you gooses or gold teeth or, or gold dust. I had all of that where people like, you know, look, look, look. And I'm looking and I'm like, oh, Jesus, what do I say? I don't see nothing. But I'm like, where, where? Well, there, there's the gold dust. And, you know, if some of you, if you have experienced it, that's great. I'm not going to, I'm not going to say it wasn't from the Lord. All I'm saying that his, his main mission and his main purpose was not to, to give you all of that. It was not to give you gold teeth because we can go to dentist and get teeth done. And now sometimes I would wonder, they're like, oh, I've got gold filling. I'm like, I wonder why he gave you gold filling because um, gold filling in your teeth. Because you can go to a dentist, and those are actually outdated. You, like, you can get veneers. You can get white, beautiful teeth because now this is not the style. Now we do. And so you, you hear all of those things, and you, get, and you get scared, and you're like, all right. Which the question, and so people say, Vita, do you feel the hair getting up on your back? And I'm like, oh. I don't know, Eva, I don't know, not, not really. Well, then you just don't have, you just don't have the Holy Spirit like I do. And that would be pride and arrogance and judgment on display, which is not from the Lord. There was so much pride at churches. Whoever's going to scream louder, run around louder, do weirder things in, in a weirder ways. Oh, those are people that are holy. They have the Holy Spirit. But when you read the purpose of the Holy Spirit was completely different. The measure should be, and the question should be, do you hear his voice? Do you hear his presence? I mean, do you feel his presence? Do you hear his counsel, his comfort? Is he in your, do you feel him? And if you yes, then you have the Holy Spirit. It shouldn't be brought down to the physical experience, but it's the work that he was sent to do. And the Bible says that Holy Spirit was sent to complete the work of Jesus. He says, there's so much I want to tell you. Jesus is telling his disciples. He's like, there's so much I want to tell you. I wish I had more time to tell of you all, all of that. But he says, I am leaving. But don't you be afraid because Holy Spirit is going to come. He's going to show you. He's going to tell you. He's going to remind you. Come on. The work of the Holy Spirit. And here we are standing. Do you have the gooseies? It's not about the goosies. Church, there was a mission and the purpose of God, the Holy Spirit in our life. And devil is so happy. He's like, yep, run after the goosies. That's what you need is goosies. So that way everyone can be scared watching you running after the experiences where in essence you're supposed to wake up and hear his voice where he says, good morning. I want you to live the best day today. I want you to make the best decisions today. I want you to live to your fullest today. I want you to operate in the giftings that I gave you today. Not chasing the gooseies. Amen? Amen. And, I've, and I've heard some people saying, well, whatever you do, just stay away from those people that talk about the Holy Spirit. So what you're saying is, whatever you do, just stay away from people that talk about God. Because God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, they're three in one. It is God. But unfortunately, because of what we have seen, some of us have closed that door. They're like, no way. That is weird. I just want to be a normal person. And devil was standing there clapping. He's like, exactly. You are robbed of your destiny because in you, you don't have a power to live a life. There, there's nothing in you. You can live victorious life. You can't live a life for Christ without Christ living in you. And he was standing there. He's like, all right, that's wonderful. Go ahead and close the door. A lot of us were so scared that we're like, you know, I am okay to just maybe like peek out and, and, and maybe look what's out there. 
but your heart was not okay. Point number two, Holy Spirit will guide you, teach you, lead you, navigate you. And I want to read to you, 1426 says, but when, the, but when the Father sends the advocate as my, as my representative, that is the Holy Spirit, he will teach you everything and will remind you of everything I have told you. I'm leaving you with a gift, peace of mind and heart. And the, and the peace I give is a gift the world cannot give. Don't be troubled or afraid. So I want you to highlight in your mind, he will teach you everything. He will remind you of everything. The gift, the peace of mind and heart. I've heard it so many times people will say, you know what? I have peace in my heart and I feel that God is leading me. Come on. That's Holy Spirit. I have peace in my mind and I feel that God is leading me. That's wonderful. That's Holy Spirit. That's him guiding. That's him leading. John 16, 13 says, when the Holy Spirit when the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. He will not speak on his own, but will tell you what he has heard. He will tell you about the future. I want you to highlight, he will guide you. He will not speak on his own, but he will tell you what he has heard. He will not tell, and he will tell you about the future. So he is talking, he is guiding, he is navigating, he is leading. You know, as a real estate broker, I have to heavily rely on the navigation. So when I get in the car, I need to know where I'm going to the destination, and I have to put it, put the um, address in, and then begin to drive. And as I begin to drive, it tells me, you have 10 minutes to your destination. And if I start taking wrong turns, it tells me, okay, well, now you have 12 minutes. You kind of took a different route, but that's okay. We can work with it because you can still arrive at the same destination. And so as we keep driving, and if I keep making mistakes, it's telling me, all right, we're adding another eight minutes, but you can still arrive at the same destination. And as I keep driving, and if I start making weird things and going my own way, my navigation begins to freak out, and it, and it just starts talking to me, on, oh, you turn, turn around, this is not the way, reroute, and, and it's just going to be uh, yelling at me almost, you know, halfway through, turn around, you turn, you're not going in the right direction. And this is what Holy Spirit does in our life. He is here to guide us. He is here to lead us. He is here to speak to us where you wake up and you make some choices and he's like, nope, that's going to add 12 minutes to your destination. It's going to take you longer to arrive where you need to arrive at the destiny that God has for you. That's not the best decision at this point. Actually, this is way off. You need to turn around. You need to do a big U-turn as soon as possible. You have just missed the block. You should have turned around yesterday. What are you doing today? Why are you still not making that decision? Come on, wake up and smell the coffee. And he begins to talk and talk and talk. And my navigation doesn't give up. When I keep driving, it's like, you turn you turn around because... The, the, the mission is to get you in the direction where you have to be. And so this is Holy Spirit. He's, he keeps talking, and he's like, nope, that's not the destiny. That's not where you're going. That's not the, the purpose. That's not the plan. No, I need you to turn around. Here's the God's call upon your life. You know, when I was 16, I went to Europe, and my uncle gave us a car, and, and my friend and I, we started driving to um, Amsterdam. And he was like, have fun. Here's the car. You girls go. So I was 16. My friend was probably 17 or 18, I don't, I don't know, um, but she was able to drive. So at that time, it was pre-navigation era and uh, paper maps. So here we are in the car driving to Amsterdam, and I'm holding this big map in my hand, and she says, Vita, are we going in the right direction? And we happened to pass the sign that said Amsterdam, and I was like, yep, we are. Keep turning. And so I, I, I thought we followed the sign, so we took and, and, and just took off. And so we're driving four hours into it. We should be already at Amsterdam. And we kind of look around, and nothing looks like Amsterdam at all. And as a matter of fact, we look into, as people are driving us, we, we look into the cars, and we're like, you know, these people actually look a little different. Um, I think we're in the wrong place. So we get out. Sure enough, we were going four hours wrong way. So my friend is so mad at me. We get in the car, and we're driving another four hours just to come back to where we started from. Church, hear me right. Eight hours. Eight hours into it, 
We're a block away where we started in the morning, woke up at 6 a.m. in the morning just to be same block away in the evening, exhausted, tired, mad, frustrated, angry, and where my uncle says, oh, by the way, but once you get there, you call me because I want to make sure you girls are okay. And here I am. I'm like, how do I tell you? that I am actually eight hours later, I'm a block away from when we left six o'clock in the morning. That is so embarrassing. And like, yep, yeah, we're here. Here where? We're, we're here. Just, we're here somewhere. Don't even ask. We're, we're here. We're mad, angry. We're here. But here's what happens in our life where we try to do our life without the navigation of the Holy Spirit. We take all kinds of turns, all kinds of directions, and years later, we end up in the same place where we started from. With so much baggage, with so much pain, with so much hurt. And we're thinking, you know, if we would have sat home that morning and drank our tea with my friend and just sat on the couch, we probably would have been better off. Here we are, exhausted ourselves, got so tired, have done, you know, went, went the routes that, that we thought was, was, was right. But that's in our life. That happens all the time when we try to live our life without the navigation of the Holy Spirit, without the presence of the Holy Spirit. We go round and around. Years later, you go, wait, I'm back at this? I thought 20 years from now, I'm going to be over here. This is what I was going to do. This is what I was going to accomplish. And I'm sitting at my ruins looking at all of this, and I'm saying, this is what I have accomplished? And Holy Spirit says, that's why I'm here, to lead you and to guide you and to navigate you through all decisions of your life to help you so you don't go in circles and circles and don't waste your time. I'm here to speak to you so you can hear my voice. I'm here to give you discernment when something looks right and you think this is it, sign me up. And he says, nope, pull back. That's not right. Just because it looks right, pull back. I've been in that situation so many times where people sound, everything sounds right. Great idea. I like, sign me up. Can I start now? And the Holy Spirit goes, Ooh, cancel, cancel, run, run for your life. And a lot of times I would override that voice. I'm like, no, but it's going to be so embarrassing. Last minute, I already committed. I already said that I was going to do it. And then last minute to cancel. And when I didn't, I had to pay for it. And then later on, I realized why the voice was telling me, why God, the Holy Spirit was telling me, no, pull back, pull back, pull back. But it was already too late. It cost me too much. And then you just say, well, we've got to learn. We've got to learn. So when you hear his voice, he, he says, I'm here to guide you how to pray. Because the Bible says, Romans 8, 27, for we don't know what to pray about, but oh, the Holy Spirit does. And as a matter of fact, he intercedes for us in accordance with God's will. He knows what the plan is. He knows what the purpose is. He knows where, what God is, where God is heading with our life and which direction we need to be going. And he begins to pray. How many times... Have I had my agenda for the prayer time? And when I sat to pray or, or, or started praying, all of a sudden the Holy Spirit would take my attention and shift me totally somewhere else where I thought, wait a minute. I came here to pray with my agenda, to pray for my beautiful children and my beautiful life and my beautiful church. And God is like, ooh, let's do this because this is where the problem is. This is where the issue is. Here's something that you're not seeing. Here's your blind spot. Let's go ahead and cover that so you don't get hit somewhere without realizing whoa, wait a minute, I thought everything was pitchy perfect, and where did this come from? And Holy Spirit, he said, I know how to pray for you. That's why I'm here to guide you. It's that navigation. It's like, turn left, turn left, come on, keep going. And, and this is what the Holy Spirit is, is here for. He is here to guide, to navigate, and to lead us. He will also na navigate us with the supernatural manifestation. The Acts 2.17 says, in the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit upon all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Young men will see visions. And your old men will dream dreams. You know, we joke a lot about it. We're saying, well, that's how you know if you're young or old. If you're getting dreams, you're getting older. Or maybe you just ate too much pizza. You know, it could be either one. But the thing is, he's, uh, he's here to navigate us and to guide us, even supernaturally. With his voice, with his leadership but even supernaturally, to, with the prophecy, with the, with the visions, and with the dreams. And we're switching to our last one. You will receive power. Point number three. Acts 1.18 says, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses 
telling people about me everywhere, in Jerusalem, throughout Judea, in Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. So what he's saying here, you will be my witnesses. Wherever you live, whatever your city is, whether it's Kirkland, Bothell, Seattle, you name the city, you are called to witness his name. And actually, you witness not just in your city, but at work, exactly where you're at, in your house, in your household. A lot of times it's easy to witness on the street because nobody knows. You're like, okay, this is my hour to go and evangelize. You get out on the streets and then you talk to somebody that, uh, that you don't know. But it's another thing to witness him in your household when their children are watching you day in and day out. They're watching. You're witnessing Jesus in you and through you. Holy Spirit who lives within you and through you. Amen. You will receive power. You know, if you're looking at disciples, the transformation that happened, how they were before and after, they were unstoppable. They were bold. And I want to tell you um, the, the verse, Acts 4.13, says, when they saw, they meaning the teachers of the law, because they, nobody knew what to do with them. They were just everywhere. People were afraid. What do we do with these guys? They are... Um, turning the world upside down because of the, with the Holy Spirit that's within them. When they saw cur uh, courage of Peter and John and realized that they were unschooled, ordinary men, they were astonished. Church, do you hear me? They were unschooled, ordinary men. How many of us would give excuse to God? Oh, God, I don't have enough education. I don't have a lot, enough of uh, theological background. I don't think I'm in a position to, to witness to anybody anything because at this point, um, I'm nobody yet. I am going to be sharing your word and I'm going to be showing the light, shining the light of Jesus and, and witnessing when I am in this place. And he says, no, look, they were unschooled, ordinary men. And he was able to turn the world upside down with these guys because of the power that was given to them because of the Holy Spirit that lives with them, with them and in them. Acts 4.29 says, one of the prayers that they have prayed, he said, now, Lord, consider the threat and enable your servants to speak your word with great boldness. Stretch out your hand to heal and perform signs and wonders through the name of your holy servant, Jesus. After they prayed, the place where they were meeting was shaken and they were filled with the Holy Spirit, and spoke the word of God boldly. I was talking to, to one pastor, and he says, Vita, you know, when I begin to talk about Jesus, he says, something takes over me. When I begin to sing, when I come on the stage to sing, something takes over me. The, 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 I can feel the power of God just, just coming over me, and I am, I am declaring the good news. And he says, when I begin to talk about Jesus, I can feel how my, as if something takes over my mouth and I can hear myself from the side. I can hear the Holy Spirit. I can feel the Holy, Holy Spirit. He says, but yet everybody else is telling me that I don't have the Holy Spirit because of the physical manifestations, what people are used to be looking at or searching for. So when we're talking about power, you will receive the power. Church, I want you to understand, it is not the power where that all of a sudden you just feel like, oh, something took over me. I can't, I can't handle myself. It is not the power I'm talking about. It is power to forgive. Sometimes it's so hard to do. You need the power of the Holy Spirit to forgive. It is a power to let go. People live life holding on to stuff for years. And it's the burden that they're carrying through life. And they don't have strength to let go. Every day they wake up, but this happened to me. But this happened to me. They have treated me wrong. They have wronged me. They have betrayed me. And they would hold on to it. And the Holy Spirit is here to give you power to let go. Holy Spirit is here to give you power to love. It is so hard. Some people are so hard to love. And sometimes we are so hard to love. It's so easy to point fingers. Well, those people are so hard to love. You know what? The other ones are pointing at me. 
There's times when I'm so hard to love, and I'm so grateful that, that, that those people are able to, to forgive me and to love me. Holy Spirit is here to give you power to overcome hard times, tough seasons, tough situations. You know, in my family, we know what it's like. My mom and, and my sisters, we know what it's like to lose a loved one. Where you think at this point, your life should have stopped right there, right when they died. But Holy Spirit gives you power to get up and continue to go forward. Continue to live. Continue, continue to keep on going. And that's the power I am talking about. He's giving us power. You know, I love it how the Word of God says, if you ask for the Holy Spirit, Jesus said, when you ask for the Holy Spirit, He will never give you stone when you ask for bread. There's so many people have told me, and I've heard it with my own ears, and I was like, I wish, I, I wish you understood what the Bible says. If you have asked for the Holy Spirit, it is given to you. It is given to you. You're just looking for the wrong things. Like that pastor said, he's like, they're telling me that I don't have Holy Spirit, but how come I feel him? Because what they're saying is you need to act certain way or, or do things certain way so that way there's, there's the evidence. Oh, you're shaking. You've got Holy Spirit. No, I just mentioned there's the power given to you to live victorious lifestyle. Holy Spirit is here to complete the work of Jesus, to enable you to live a victorious lifestyle. He says, if you ask for Holy Spirit, it's given to you. You have the Holy Spirit in you. It is so easy. He gives you power to ministry, for ministry and to minister. He gives you power to stay focused to stay on path that God has for your life. It's so easy to get sidetracked and go a different direction, but he gives you power for that. I love it, John 1, 5. Jesus says, John baptized with water, but in few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. So pretty much what he's saying, John baptized with step one, repent. But if you don't shift gears and go to step two, receive the Holy Spirit, you're stuck at step one, repent. So we sin and we repent. But we have no power in us to go farther. So then we sin again and we repent. And we sin again and we repent. And we sin again and we repent. And I've heard people say, oh, this Christian life is so hard. you got to try so hard not to sin, not to look, not to do. But you know what? The Holy Spirit is released to equip you, empower you to live the lifestyle where God is in you. Where it's no longer something that you have to do. You have to try. Don't look. Don't do. Don't see. Don't touch. Don't, 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 don't. He says, I want you to live a life of do. Do love Jesus. Do be crazy about him. Do be in love with him. How about do? That's what the Holy Spirit is here to do. Where your life, is, you're enjoying the life with Jesus. No longer it's what you don't, but it's what you do. And that's where we are to, to, to go. Shift the gears. We repent and receive the Holy Spirit. Amen. There's so many benefits to the Holy Spirit. And I only covered three. Church, we can talk about it for hours. There's so many scriptures. I had such a hard time. I'm like, how do you, how do, you do this? How do you explain? I'm just going to mention a few more. The ones that I'm going to say, they're all backed up by the Bible. Some have one verse, some have two, some have three verses, some have more verses. Backing up. The Holy Spirit intercedes for us and through us. The Holy Spirit calls and qualifies every minister for the work of the ministry. The Holy Spirit leads, speaks, teaches us, guides us into all truth. 
The Holy Spirit glorifies Christ, reveals Christ to us, and brings all Christ's words to our remembrance. The Holy Spirit shows us what's to come, knows the deep things of God, searches all things, and reveals all things. Where the Holy Spirit is, there's freedom, there's liberty. We are convicted by the Holy Spirit, led by the Holy Spirit, filled by the Holy Spirit, and sealed by the Holy Spirit. Church, would you give him a shout of praise? This is the God we serve. This is the mighty God we serve. Holy Spirit was given to us to live a victorious lifestyle, to empower us. Would you just stand on your feet? I want to give you a moment. I want to give you a moment to pray. We're going to have some leaders here up front that are here to meet you, to pray together with you. I don't know where you're at. As we were talking about the Holy Spirit, you know better. As I said, some of us have been scared by things we saw and we closed that door and we weren't open to open it even a little bit. We said, nope, it's not for me. Some of us are at the level where we keep dialing the number, 911, God help. We have the power, we have the spirit of God with us and in us, yet we're stuck at the same place, using it only at that. Oh, God help when I'm in the emergency. And that's my relationship with the Holy Spirit. You know better where you're at. Some of you, maybe you have never gave your life to Jesus and you have never even accepted the Holy Spirit. I don't know where you're at. It's better for you to know. But I want to give you opportunity to get prayed for. Wherever you're at, I want you to come and stand together and partner with someone and pray. And tap in to that gift. God, the Holy Spirit who was given to you, to live in you, to be with you, who will never leave you, who will never forsake you, who is with you at all times, who is gonna lead you, who is gonna navigate you, who is gonna speak to you, who is gonna grab hold of you and lead you in the direction that you have to go. Come on, I want leaders to come forward. I wanna give you the moment. Church, this is your time.